Ten hut, you fucking slime buckets. And for this episode of Battlefield 4 Boot Camp, we're going in depth with the classes here. This is what you guys wanted. So, first is going to be my primary assault kit right here i'm using my favorite gun the m416 high rate of fire very low recoil high damage output this is a great all-around weapon battlefield is very different gun mechanics than call of duty there are several things going on when you actually shoot your gun there's vertical recoil there's horizontal recoil and there's bullet spread which increases over the amount of time that you hold down that trigger if you tap fire instead of going in fully automatic this bullet spread will actually be a lot less from your gun and you'll have a lot less vertical and horizontal recoil as a result of it additionally there is an even greater amount of bullet spread for when you hip fire so that is also something you must take into consideration in addition to that there is the velocity that your bullet travels that's right when you shoot your gun it doesn't automatically end up on the other side of the map the battlefield calculates the distance between you and the person you're shooting at and it varies depending upon what type of gun you're firing so even if your gun has a very high rate of fire if it has a very very low bullet velocity that means it's going to take a while for your shots to get down range even though you're shooting a lot of them these are all things to take into consideration when choosing the different ex accessories, barrels, and under barrels for your particular gun. Now, for the optic, I prefer just the regular red dot sight, although the Coyote red dot sight is actually the cleanest of the red dot sights. It's got the uh, smallest, I guess, semi-circle, if you will, on the actual top of the gun. Unfortunately, I don't have it unlocked because it's a battle pack item, but I do have it on some of my guns, and that is the red dot sight that I actually prefer. I don't use any of these medium range sights on my assault rifles. I tend to just go with the regular red dot sight. Now the accessories are as follows. There's the canted iron sights, which is just regular iron sights at a 45 degree angle. This way you could flip kind of between a zoomed in scope or a long to medium range scope and the regular iron sights. Again, I don't use this very often because number one, I don't use a longer scope on my assault rifles. And number two, you have that gigantic fucking scope in your line of sight whenever you're using the iron sights. Think of uh, the hybrid scope from MW3. There's also the magnifier, which is also exactly like the hybrid scope from MW3. W3 lets you toggle on between two different scopes. There's the flashlight, which has no actual functionality benefit to you other than it'll light up some corners and temporarily blind your enemies. There's the tactical light, which is a light activated when you ADS. So this will hide you off of the radar whenever you're not ADSing, but when you do ADS, you could blind your opponent. The there's the laser sight, which actually can also blind your opponent as normal, but it also has a 25% reduction in the hip fire penalty. That means your hip fire spread will be a lot tighter, just like uh, that girl's vagina you want to fuck. Now, I have a green laser sight on this gun because I ended up getting it from a battle pack and it's kind of cool to have a green one. There's also the tri-beam laser and the laser light combo, which are pretty much self-explanatory, but... I go with the laser sight here over the flashlight or the tactical light because this actually gives me some sort of functionality with my gun. I get less of a hip fire penalty and, and you could also blind people with it too. Now for barrels, these do very different things, so listen up. The muzzle brake and the compensator are basically the same thing, but the muzzle brake will decrease your vertical recoil, while the compensator decreases your horizontal recoil, both at the penalty of adding a greater spread to your gunfire. So your bullets will spread more, but there'll be less recoil on your gun. So depending upon which gun has, you know, which bad vertical versus horizontal, recoil you could choose this now I always choose uh, the compensator here because the vertical recoil is very easy to manage it's usually just straight up and down and you could help lower the vertical recoil by putting it in burst fire mode or just by tap firing so the compensator is what you want here because the sway of the gun back and forth is a lot harder to manage than up and down there's also the flash hider which has no functionality to actual uh, bullet spread or recoil other than reducing the muzzle flash so you're going to be more accurate because you could see 
see where your bullets are going a little bit. Now, the heavy barrel is something I would not recommend. It will increase your accuracy with the gun, meaning your bullets will have less spread on them. However, you will get an increase in the recoil. And for me, the bullet spread doesn't mean that much to me. The recoil is something that I want to manage. So this is a no bueno. The suppressor is my favorite barrel attachment in this game. It keeps you off the radar and it reduces your muzzle flash to absolutely nothing. However, it will reduce your bullet velocity and bullet drop. However, it doesn't decrease your damage over range like in previous games like Battlefield 3. So if you want to be stealthy, go with the suppressor, especially on a gun like this, I guess, which doesn't really have that much recoil. So I'm going to put on the suppressor here. There's other kinds of suppressors, but they're pretty much all the same thing. So the suppressor is what I usually use on uh, this particular assault class. Now, the underbarrel grips. There's the underslug rail, which I went over in the very, very first uh, assault kit episode of the boot camp. There's the bipod, which stabilizes your shooting when laying down on the ground. I'm not a camping little bitch, so I don't use this shit. Then there's several different kind of grips. The ergo grip, the angled grip, and then the stubby grip. And by the way, these three grips here are basically the same as the previous three. They do the same exact functionality. So I'm just going to go over these three here because the bottom three are actually battle pack items. So even though I have the potato grip on this class, really the stubby grip is pretty much the same thing. So the ergonomic grip is going to help you steady your gun in situations where you're moving. So it helps with your hip fire and when you're walking slash running and aiming and shooting. So it'll help reduce uh, the hip fire spread by 50%. Good for people that are run and gun and always on the move. The angled grip will help reduce your first shot recoil by 33%. Again, this is something that is extremely useful on certain guns. This particular gun, the M416 though, like I said, doesn't have much recoil anyway. Now, the stubby grip improves your bullet spread per shot, and it also gives you a less maximum spread when you're ADSing. As you're shooting the gun more and more, as you're climbing through bullets, you know, as you're not tap firing, if you're automatic firing, then your bullets will spread out more when you're shooting the gun. The stubby grip aims to reduce that. So that's what I like to do, because I am a very, very uh, trigger-happy person, I guess you could say. I do my tap fire when I need it, but most of the time I'm in fully auto mode so this is what I choose on this particular assault class other assault rifles I like to use in the same style that I use the M416 are the AUG A3, the ACE 23, and if you have premium, the L85A2 is also amazing. It has a high rate of fire and it shoots like a laser. Now with the assault kit and close quarters combat, I like to use either the AEK or or the FAMAS. Both of these weapons have an extremely high rate of fire, but as such, they also have a lot of recoil. But you know what I do to counteract that? I throw on the muzzle brake, which will reduce the vertical recoil by 25%, which is what a lot of these high rate of fire weapons have. And I'll also throw on this angled grip that reduces the first shot recoil. This way you could stay on target throughout your whole entire uh, engagement. You'll see some of the clips in the background here doesn't look like this gun has that much recoil. Well, one, I'm managing it with the attachment that I'm using, and I'm also burst firing slash compensating for it with my left stick. Now, if I want to roll with a shotgun with the assault kit, because remember, you can put shotguns on any kit, then I like to use the pump-action shotguns. The semi-automatic ones are kind of fucking cheesy, so I don't like using it. What I do is I do a nice little red dot sight on this Remington R870 or the Hawk 12 gauge. I've also heard is a really good shotgun, but I haven't unlocked it yet. Uh, so I'm going to use the red dot sight with the laser sight so that in case I need to hip fire, I will. Now on the barrel, I go with the muzzle brake here simply because I don't really like the duck bill, which is a shotgun only muzzle attachment or barrel attachment rather. It will do a shot spread in kind of a horizontal fashion instead of the 
normal circular fashion. And the full choke for me just doesn't feel right. I shoot people with the shotgun with the full choke on and they don't drop. And that's because the, uh, the amount of damage downrange is not as good. It's not very good for stability or hip fire. But if you are one of those shotgun users that is constantly ADSing, then this is what you'll use. And for the ammunition, this is a different thing you could put on a shotgun. I like the buckshot. There's also the darts, the frags, and the slugs. Now, the slugs are, you know, designed for, like, longer range combat. I just like the standard buckshot. That works fine for me. And how I use a shotgun is I almost kind of quick scope with it. I ADS with it real quick, and as I'm ADSing, that's when I'll shoot. The pump actions in this game actually pump a lot faster than you're used to in Call of Duty, so you could fire off more rounds than you could think. But for this gun, I kind of ADS and shoot at the same time, although you could definitely go hip fire only. But let's show you some other classes that I like to use. Now, for the engineer kit, the PDWs, you're going to be running and gunning with these weapons. So that's why I like to put the ergo grip or the vertical grip on these particular guns because this is what's going to help you in those run and gun type situations. You're not going to be doing any long range gun fights with these weapons, so that's why I like to use that. The guns that I use from the PDW class are the MX4. The UMP9, once you level the engineer kit all the way up, you'll eventually get this UMP9. Or, my favorite here is the CBJMS, which I used in the engineer episode of Battlefield 4 Boot Camp. And by the way, those uh, kit episodes are the way that I normally play, and my favorite guns with those particular classes. Now, if you want to go really close quarters combat with these PDWs, I recommend the CZ. 3A1, which kind of looks and behaves like the Scorpion Evo from Black Ops 2, or the JS2, which actually reminds me of kind of the Chicom CQB in terms of the way it looks, but it's got 50 bullets in the magazine and it's a fully automatic gun, so in that term it's not. But you could see how high the rate of fire is on those particular guns compared to some of the other ones in this same class. So those are the guns that I like to use for uh, the engineer class. Now, I know engineers are on bigger maps, so I also sometimes like to rock carbines. And for me, the carbine class is also something I use additionally in the recon class for my aggressive recon kind of play style. So I almost always have a suppressor on most of these guns because you got to move in silence and violence just like a bad boy when you're trying to get behind enemies and then you got the normal red dot sight and laser sight. For this, I like to do, you know, the... Um, it depends on what the recoils for certain guns are. Uh, stubby grip will work fine for me here because I really don't run and gun a lot with this. But at the same time, it doesn't have a lot of recoil. I don't need that angled grip. So the AK-5C is a great carbine. My favorite is the SG-553 though. And I happen to use the angled grip on it because there's a little bit more recoil. But it's still ma very, very manageable with that angled grip. The other carbines that I like to use or love are the AKU-12, the ACWR, and the ACE-21 CQB, which actually has 35 or 36, depending upon how you count it, bullets in the magazine. So it's got the largest magazine of the particular carbine class. Now, if you're going close quarters with the carbine, I guess you would roll with the MTAR-21. It's got the highest rate of fire in this class, but I'd much rather just use a PDW at that point. Next, onto the support kit. I like using only two of the LMGs. Uh, most LMGs in this game are not very good, but the M240B, which I used in the Battlefield 4 Boot Camp episode, and the MG4 are my favorites here. And what I like to rock on these guns is definitely the angled grip if I have unlocked it. Because the first shot recoil on LMGs is a gigantic fucking kick. But once you stabilize that kick, then the recoil is pretty much self-explanatory. Of course, the suppressor always works, and you normally just get the holographic sight as your first uh, sight unlock for the LMGs, but I happen to level this up enough for regular red dot sight, but holographic sight on LMGs is just as fine too, and uh, again, I like to use the laser sight even though I'm not going to be hip firing with an LMG, because again, at least it gives me functionality unlike the laser sight, and again, with the shotguns, you could also use shotguns 
uh, with this class as well. If you're running in domination or team deathmatch, and somebody in your squad needs to be a supply guy. Now, for the recon class, the best sniper rifle in the game is one that I don't have unlocked yet. The SRR-61 or the Intervention, if you guys remember back from to Modern Warfare 2. But the two that I recommend are the L are the CSLR4 and the M48-5. These guys are going to be doing your most damage. Now, there are different kinds of uh, ways that you could customize this particular gun here, so... Let's uh, let's get into it here. Now, you could put a long range, medium range, or close range scope on a sniper rifle. I like the rifle scope, although I just saw this hunter scope, so maybe I'll throw that on if I want to go really long distance sniping. And of course, there's the 40 times zoom, which is completely ridiculous. Now, I have the variable zoom scope, which I finally got fucking right, as my accessory on here, which is something that you could toggle between two different distances. There's also... The range finder, which is kind of uh, the same functionality as the PLD. And there's your other laser sights that you'd usually have. And additionally, interestingly enough, there's those recanted iron sights as well. Now, for a barrel, I would, I guess you'd go with one of these. Probably the flash hider would be the best. Because, uh, you know, if you're sniping, you're holding breath. Really, the recoil isn't going to be that crazy for you anyway. Now, for the auxiliary accessory here, the straight pull is the way to go. This allows you to pull the bolt back without zooming out of your ADS mechanic. If you guys remember back to the uh, recon episode, you saw me uh, on ADSing every time I take a shot. Well, if you're looking at the gameplay in the background, I'm not doing that anymore. That's because I got this straight pull bolt on this particular class. Now again, you guys saw my aggressive recon setup. It's one of these carbines along with you know, whatever attachments you would have on it. So I hope you guys are helped out by these different guns and attachments here on this episode of Battlefield 4 Boot Camp. So, where do we go from here? Well, I'll leave it up to you guys. There's going to be a comment down in the comment section that you're going to have to thumb up. You could either thumb up the one for vehicles next or game modes next. Those are the two things that I'm going to tackle in Battlefield 4 Boot Camp. Now get out and give me my scalps. I expect at least 100 from every one of you motherfuckers.